if something is now giving me a lower yield, but the yield has a high reliability, then I may look at that opportunity a little bit deeper to potentially deploy my money instead of keeping it in cash. Are you ready to transform your life? This is a no-nonsense show helping immigrants like you create generational wealth, even while working full-time. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Socket Jane. Welcome back, everyone. This is Socket Jane with the Migrate to Wealth podcast. As most of you already know, I'm not a proponent of investing in paper assets, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. So if I don't invest in the stock market, what else do I invest in? Well, there are several different types of asset classes. Let's first define those, right? Real estate, oil and gas, crypto, precious metals, agriculture, and many more. And each of these asset classes have sub-asset classes, so much so that one's head may start spinning. And depending on who you're listening to, each asset class is arguably the best asset class since a slice of bread. So how does one make a decision on what to invest in? Today, I'm going to share with you my own investment philosophy. You may ask, what is an investment philosophy? An investment philosophy is a set of parameters that are utilized to assess an investment. And if an investment does not fit those parameters, in my opinion, it's not even worth analyzing the opportunity. Don't even waste your time. With multiple asset classes to invest in, you have to give yourself a structure to identify things that are worth spending some time on. An investment philosophy provides that structure. Let's take an example. If you've ever talked to a financial advisor, they have always asked you a list of questions to determine what your risk tolerance is. And that is the only vector they use to put you in a box that actually they're incentivized to sell you. Your risk tolerance is X and you plan to return on Y date. So your mix of stocks and bonds should be Z, right? But let's really define what the risk is. What is risk? In my opinion, risk is in any investment is directly proportional to your understanding of the opportunity. How much do you understand that opportunity? What do you know about that asset class? Are you controlling it or is it being managed by somebody else? And if it's being managed by somebody else, do you know them? Do you know their track record? And what is your ultimate goal with it? And how does an economic downturn impact your investment? And these are some of the questions. These are not in specific order, but these questions need to be answered. A better understanding of these questions will actually inherently make your investments less risky. Now, at the onset, it may seem overwhelming. But once you have a structured approach to your investment, you start to ease into the process. This structure is what we call as investment philosophy. Now, what is my investment philosophy? The first component of my investment philosophy is cash flow. If you had a chance to talk to me, you know I have a bias towards cash flow. Several moons ago, I used to look at 12% annualized cash on cash return. But with real estate returns getting tighter and tighter, 12% is actually being almost unheard of now. So since then, I've gotten more focused on reliability of the yield versus yield itself. If something is now giving me a lower yield, but the yield has a high reliability, then I may look at that opportunity a little bit deeper to potentially deploy my money instead of keeping it at cash. Because you all know, cash at hand loses its value as it waits for the opportunity. This is a concept that my mentor, Robert Kiyosaki, talks a lot about. Velocity of money, which is how fast your money makes money for you. If you know the principle of 72, which is 72 divided by the yield on your money, it gives you the number of years that'll take you to double your money. So let's take an example. If you're getting a 10% yield on an opportunity, it will take you approximately seven years to double your investment, initial investment. So the sooner you deploy your money and start making the yield, the sooner your money will multiply. The second parameter is how well do I understand it? I only invest in things that I understand. I don't invest in the stock market because I really do not understand it. It is very critical for me to be able to understand the opportunity itself. Wall Street is notorious about talking in jargons that are highly complicated, high, they seem sophisticated. They just throw out terminologies that makes you feel stupid and seem hard to understand. Understanding financial language is very important, but understanding your investment is way more important. If someone who has an investment opportunity cannot explain that to you at the back of a napkin, if the opportunity does not have a story that you can understand in few sentences, run away from it. 
chances are the folks who are putting it together may not even understand it fully. Now, the other thing is that I only invest in real things, real assets that I can touch and feel. They're typically the assets. They're not, they're not just stocks, bonds, and mutual funds because you can't really touch or feel those assets. Real assets would be homes, your know, energy, precious metals, even debt to a certain extent if deployed against appropriate asset class. Real assets are time-tested. When you invest in real things, over a period of time, it creates financial wealth, but not really the paper assets. After all the taxes and fees, uh, we really don't have much left. Now, within real assets, I invest in things that are essential. It's a type of thing that will do well no matter what's happening in the economy. When the times are not good, you still need to still live somewhere. Class B and C apartment complexes have been our bread and butter. And when the times are good, when the times are bad, these are always going to be needed. The second is going to be energy or the commodities. No matter how bad the economy is, people still need energy to heat the household, to climate control their home. They need to eat food. Now, I also invest in asset classes that are tax efficient. My bias is towards tax efficiency of an opportunity. To the extent possible, I want to minimize my taxes. Real estate is a great example of it. Depreciation when you purchase a property not only minimizes the taxes while you're holding it, it also in certain cases can be utilized to offset your active income. Can you imagine how powerful that would be? The last one would be, who do you invest in? You invest in people that you know, like, and trust. I have to know them personally, their track record, and other people who have invested with them. This business is full of people with low integrity, so you need to make sure you do your due diligence. So in summary, my investment philosophy includes cash flow, real assets, essentials, tax efficiency, and who do I invest with. If you need help establishing your own investment philosophy, please schedule a call with me. I would be happy to understand your goals and help you develop your own personalized investment philosophy. The link for my scheduling call with me is included in the show notes below. That's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you got value from this episode, you might consider sharing this content with a friend. But most importantly, be sure to take action on what you've learned. One way you can take the next step is to connect directly with Socket on an investor call. That link is waiting for you in the show notes below. The content of this podcast is for informational purposes only. Please consult your own advisors when making any investment decisions. Keep listening. We'll see you on the next episode.